Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. Today, we're going to look at the AP Psychology key terms for 3.6, social emotional development across the lifespan. So this is not content. This is literally just the key terms that were associated with the 3.6, well, at least some of them. I think there might be more, but this is a good chunk of them anyway. I'll give you a definition and a real life example so that you can make your flashcards because it's super important to know the terms in AP Psych. We have to know them to be able to apply them, whether to an MCQ or an FRQ. Very important. Anyway, thanks again to everybody who's subscribed to my channel. Really appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, hit that click button, please. Thank you. And let's get started. Okay. So we're going to go through a bunch of them today. There's a lot of them in 3.6 that are important. So let's go through them. And then at the end, I'm just going to go through the words and see if you can think about the definition as you go along. Okay. Let's start with, this is the question that we were going to be re like sort of like talking about when we talked about in the content was explain how social development relates to the behavior and mental processes. This was what we talked about in the content video. Okay, let's start with microsystem. So this is the immediate environments with which a person interacts, such as family, school, and peers. A child's relationships with their parents and teachers, which directly influences their behavior and emotional development. A definition of mesosystem. This is the interactions between different parts of a microsystem. So for example, the relationship between a child's parents and teachers, for example, during a parent-teacher meeting. This affects the child's academic performance and behavior in school. Exosystem. The external environments that indirectly influence the individual, such as a parent's workplace. A child is affected when their parent has a, stress, a stressful job, even though the child does not interact directly with the workplace. Macrosystem. This is the larger cultural and societal context that influences an individual's development. So a child raised in a culture that values individualism may develop different social behaviors than one raised in a culture that values collectivism. Chronosystem, the dimension of time, including life transitions and historical events that affect development. So a family moving to a new city during a child's adolescence, impacting their friendships and social development would be an example of chronosystem. Authoritarian parenting. These were the different parenting styles we went over in the video. A parenting style that characterized by high demands, low responsiveness with strict rules and little warmth. A child raised by an authoritarian parent may follow rules strictly, but could also develop low self-esteem due to the lack of the emotional support. Authoritative parenting. This is a parenting style characterized by high expectations, warmth, and open communication. A child raised by an authoritative parent is more likely to develop high self-esteem, good social skills, because they receive both the guidance and support from their parent. Permissive parenting, a parenting style with few rules or expectations, but high warmth. A child raised by permissive parents may struggle with self-discipline and responsibility, but they do feel emotionally supported. Secure attachment. This is a strong, healthy bond between child and caregiver, and it's characterized by trust and comfort. A securely attached child feels safe exploring their environment, knowing that their caregiver is a reliable source of comfort. Insecure attachment. This is a bond characterized by anxiety or avoidance of the caregiver, leading to issues with trust and emotional regulation. An insecurely attached child can become anxious when their caregiver leaves and has difficulty trusting other people in future relationships. Separation anxiety. This is distress experienced by children when they are separated from their caregiver. A toddler cries and becomes distressed when their mother leaves the room, showing separation anxiety. And this is very common. I was a kindergarten teacher, and I, I can tell you that, especially in kindergarten kids, this is real, that separation anxiety. Imaginary audience. Adolescents believe that uh, they are for the focus of everyone's attention and concern. A teenager might feel self-conscious and believe that everyone at school is watching or judging, for example, their new hairstyle or their new uh, clothing that they've bought or shoes or whatever, or maybe their haircut, whatever it is, they are feeling like they're being judged continuously. Personal fable. This is an adolescent's belief that their experiences are unique and that no one else can understand what they're going through. A teenager believes that no one can understand their heartbreak after a breakup because they feel that their situation is special. Which to be fair, I mean, it is kind of heartbreaking, isn't it? 
Erickson's psychosocial stages. Erickson's theory that individuals pass through eight stages of development, each involving a specific psychosocial conflict. So we went through these in the other video and you can go through them all. The trust versus mistrust was one of them. It's a child learns to trust their caregiver if their needs are consistently met. Adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. This is stressful or traumatic experiences in childhood that can have a long-term effect on mental health and development. So a child who experiences physical abuse may have difficulty forming trusting relationships as an adult due to this adverse childhood experience. Identity development. This is the process through which individuals develop a sense of who they are, often explored during adolescence. A teenager exploring different career options and personal interests to develop a sense of their future identity. So perhaps maybe you're doing some volunteer work. This is just an example too. You know, you're trying to explore your, to see like what's going to fit for you. I, I have these conversations all the time with my high school students. Like they don't know what they want to do. They don't know what they want to do in their future. And you shouldn't really when you're 16, 17. Some, some people do and some people don't, but you want to explore that identity. You want to explore who you think you are going to be in the future. The social clock, the culturally preferred timing for major life events such as marriage, parenthood, and retirement. In some cultures, people are expected to marry in their 20s, while in others, this is a milestone that occurs later in life. It really does depend on your culture. Emerging adulthood. A transitional period between adolescence and full adulthood where individuals explore various life possibilities. So a 25-year-old taking time to explore different career paths and relationships before they set out into these adult roles. Parallel play. This is a form of play where children play next to each other but do not interact directly. So two toddlers sitting next to each other, each playing with their own toy cars but not talking or playing together. This is parallel play. Pretend play. This is a type of play where children use their imagination to create scenarios and roles. A child pretending to be a teacher, instructing their stuffed animals, or practicing social roles through imaginative play. Okay, so let's have a look through the ones we've just learned. See if you can remember what the definition is, or even just an example. Look through your cards to make sure you haven't missed anything. Let's start with microsystem. Mesosystem. Exosystem, macrosystem, chronosystem, authoritarian parenting, authoritative parenting, permissive parenting, secure attachment. Insecure attachment. Separation anxiety. Imaginary audience. Personal fable. Erickson's psychosocial stages. Adverse childhood experiences. Identity development, social clock, emerging adulthood, parallel play, pretend play. Okay, so those are all the key terms that I could come up with for 3.6. Hopefully you know them. If there's anything we do know about AP Psych is there's a lot of key terms and you have to know them. You have to know what they mean and you have to know an example of each one so that you can apply it to an FRQ or if you get an MCQ that's asking you something and you've got those four options, five, whatever options, however many options you have, you can actually identify them and be able to give an example. It is the only way, guys, to the four and the five. Okay, I know everyone wants the five. So it is the only way to the five is You've got to know your key terms. So hopefully these were helpful. If you can think of any others, if you want me to do anything else on videos, let me know. Leave a comment below. Always happy to hear from you guys. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button also. And thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.